Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your audio sound as good as possible inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So if you're a beginner and you don't even know much about audio editing, this is the perfect video for you. I'm gonna walk you step by step everything that I do to my videos when editing them to make the audio sound as good as possible. You gotta just press record. Now before we get into this tutorial, it's definitely recommended to wear headphones when you are audio editing. Typically your headphones are gonna be so much better to listen to audio than something like a built-in computer speaker or a monitor speaker. Most people don't have expensive speakers, but they do have some headphones laying around, so plug those in and that's gonna be better off for you to start editing your audio. So here in Final Cut Pro 10, you can see that I do have some clips down here and we are going to be editing the audio of these video clips to make it sound as good as possible. I'm going to walk you through everything that I do step by step so you guys can see exactly my process. I'm not saying that my process is the best process, but if you are a beginner, I promise you, you are going to learn a few things here that are going to make your audio sound a lot better. So stay to the end of this video so you do not miss out. But the first thing that I like to do is actually the EQ. Now, this is something that I didn't do for a long time because I was just kind of over overwhelmed with it. And to be honest, I'm not a professional when it comes to doing this. So I'm going to show you what I do and I'm going to try and teach it in a basic way that a beginner could follow and understand and practice some of this stuff in your own video. So let's get right into it. First thing we want to do is to select a clip that we want to edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this first clip. And if we hit play, we can hear that the if audio you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me. Edit sounds fine, but it's a little bit low. We are going to fix that next, but I am going to adjust the EQ first and then you'll see See why I do that first later. But what we do is we go up here and we are going to see this little sound mixer box. This sound mixer box, if we click this, it's going to open up, see equalization, it's going to open up this window right here. This is called the graphic equalizer. Right now it's set to flat and you can see that each point is set to zero decibels. Now if I raise this point, which is 32 hertz, this is going to be at 12 decibels and that's going to raise that lower bassy frequency up higher so that it's louder or I could reduce that to negative 20 dB and that is going to make it very, very quiet. So each of these decibels are related to a different uh, hertz, a different frequency. Dragging them up are going to uh, emphasize that, make them louder. Dragging them down are going to get rid of that. Now the reason I use this is to actually make my audio sound better. So I adjust these up and down and it can actually make your microphone sound a lot cleaner, a lot smoother. And and sometimes when recording on DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, it just doesn't sound full. It doesn't sound super good. And actually just messing with this a little bit can make your voice sound a lot cleaner. And honestly, it can really make a cheap microphone sound expensive if you get this right. Like they can sound really, really good if you mess with these settings correctly. Now, what I like to do is actually set this first clip on a loop. And it's really simple to do this. You need to make sure that your loop playback is on. All you got to do is hit command L and that is going to turn it on. On, or if it's already on, that would turn it off, but command L to turn it back on. And then instead of hitting the space bar for play, like we always do, we are going to hit this forward uh, slash button. Hitting this button is going to play it and then put it on a loop so that it goes over and over again. And as it's playing, you're going to see me do a few things here. You're going to see me moving this up and down, seeing what sounds better. Now, typically voices don't fall in this range or in this range. It's usually in that middle range. And so these, I might be able to move around a little bit, but I won't really notice much until I get into this range of the EQ. Another thing I'm looking for here is the background AC unit. There is a noise removal plugin that I'm going to show you guys how to use, but actually messing with this, I might be able to find that maybe the AC is on a specific uh, channel frequency. And if I pull it down, it's going to get rid of that. So I'm looking to get rid of some of those unwanted noises by lowering the frequency. And then I'm looking to kind of mess with the rest of them to get my voice sound as clear and full as possible. So we're going to go ahead and loop this and then I am going to mess with the EQ. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. So right here, you can see as I pulled this up, it's actually increasing that AC unit in the background. So I definitely don't want to do that. And 
By the way, you never want to boost any of these up to 20 decibels. I usually boost them if I'm going to boost them around the six decibel mark, um, but you do not want to go that high. But the reason I'm doing that now is so I can hear it better and I go, okay, this is where the AC unit is falling in. Um, and so these are the kind of things that I'm listening for while editing. Listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. All right, now in this channel, I'm also really getting that AC unit as well. I'm gonna hit play so you guys can hear that. Now then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. Now instead of just reducing this all the way to get rid of that noise, this AC unit sound is actually tied to some of the same frequencies as my voice. So it's gonna sound a bit funny if I just pull this all the way down. If you're listening to this audio right now, it sounds pretty dead. My voice kind of sounds like it's coming through a telephone or a walkie talkie. So this is where you really have to kind of play back and forth, go through it a few times and see what's going to sound best because you want to take away some of those noises you don't want, but you also want your voice sounding really nice. Audio to make it sound better. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio. So in this channel, I feel like as I pull it up, I'm starting to get that walkie talkie telephone effect again, and it's making my voice just sound a lot less full. And so bringing that up, I definitely don't want to do. I'm going to leave it at zero. I could even bring it down a little bit if I don't want that. But for now, I'm going to leave it at zero and move on to the next one. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound now, once I've gone through, I made some simple adjustments. I'll put it on loop and I'll kind of click it on and off to see how it sounds. If it's, if it's starting to sound worse, then I'm doing something wrong. If it's starting to sound better, I'm on the right track. What I'll do is I'll go back through these again and I'll start to just tweak them little by little until I get something that I'm happy with. You are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing... So I definitely feel with it on, I am getting less of that AC unit sound in the background and I feel like my voice is a little bit fuller. There's a few things I can tweak here, so I'm going to play it through a couple more times and just make some small tweaks to the EQ. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio. Now it's just a subtle difference, but I do definitely think this sounds a whole lot better. And so I'm pretty happy with how this is sounding. Once I'm done, all you gotta do is hit that X and this is gonna save everything. So I'm gonna hit X and now what I can do is I can see over here, I can turn it off and on just from this tab right here. If I do wanna go back in and make some changes, I can click on that soundboard again and this is gonna pull up the same window. Now one thing that I like to add here and there, I don't use it all the time, but I do really like using it and it's helped me a lot and that's the compressor. Now to find it, if you go to the effects tab by clicking on this, you are going to see that it's set to video, but if you scroll down, you are gonna see audio and it says all, we can click on that and from here we can search for compressor. You can drag that onto your clip. Now watch what happens to the waveform when I let go. It's going to boost stuff up. Now the compressor is really good for boosting up low ends where stuff is quiet it, and it's also good for not clipping those high ends. It tries to keep everything together more level. So here's a great example. When I was shooting my how to vlog video with my wife, we had one shotgun microphone right in between us, but I just talked a little bit louder than her. So her audio was a lot quieter. And so when I threw the compressor on, it brought her voice up so that we were at about the same audio level and that I wasn't much louder than her, but we both had that same loudness. Now there's a whole lot that you can do with compressor. Or if you open up the parameters, you can mess with all these and see what's going to sound best for you. Typically what I do sometimes is just leave it how it is. Now this is the beginner's tutorial, so I am not going to touch anything, but you can see here, even the audio form looks a lot, uh, like a lot more level. It doesn't look like the low parts are as low. So if I listen to this back, things are going to sound a lot louder that were quieter. And so you can hear what that sounds like. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. Now again, I don't always love using the compressor because what I found is sometimes when you are quiet and it boosts stuff up, it can boost up that background noise like the AC or other things like that. So definitely something to experiment with, but it can be a lifesaver like it was for me on that video with my wife and it ended up sounding really, really good. For this clip, I'm actually going to remove that and my next step that I would do if I was editing this is to set 
set my audio levels. I like to do the compressor first because that kind of messes with that. But setting the audio levels is really simple. All you need to do is drag this up and down. So you can see if I drag it up to 12 dB, that's gonna make it as loud as possible. Or if I drag it down, that is going to make it quieter. Now when setting your audio levels, you wanna make sure that nothing is clipping above this zero dB uh, audio levels right here. So if I play it through, I'm gonna see where this is falling. I want it to fall right around negative six. Uh, even if it goes up above that, that's fine, as long as it doesn't pass over zero. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. So it sounds pretty good. I honestly could increase that to, uh, you know, seven or eight. But if you notice something right here, right, right when I tried to pull that up, it just jumped up to 12. Well, what you can do to do precise adjustments is hold down the command button. And then when you do this, I can go from six to seven to eight pretty easily because it slows everything down. So I'm going to go ahead and move that to seven. And that is a nice little hack that you can do. One other thing you can do is go up here and you can actually just change your DB by typing this in. If I want to go to 7.5 or something, you can do that. Uh, and you can also drag this as well. I'm going to leave mine at 7 DB. I'll do one last check, make sure it's not clipping in this beginning this part audio. where it's nice and loud and it looks perfect. The next thing that I might add is a noise removal. This can help get rid of that background noise. And so if I go up here and I go to my audio analysis tab and I click show, this is going to give us some more options and you can see right here it says noise removal. If I click that, it's automatically set to 50% and typically this is a bit too much. I find that it kind of distorts the voice too much. It just doesn't sound the best. So we're going to hit play and see how this sounds at 50%. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are. It's actually taking away from the quality of the voice. And so I am going to bring this down, uh, even though it did get rid of that background noise and it's just my voice, uh, you don't hear the AC at all. It, it's not worth it because it just doesn't sound as good. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. Now then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound. So what I found is right at 30% for this clip uh, specifically, it gets rid of that background noise without messing with my voice a bunch. And again, I don't even use this all the time because it can mess with your voice so much. And I actually have a video on how to record your audio with no background noise. So definitely check that out by clicking the link in the description. That's going to save your life because you do not want to be using this noise removal. But if you get into an instance where you might need to, this is always there to help save you if you need it. So let's say that we like this audio and we want to copy and paste it to all the clips in the timeline. What you can do is you can click your clip, you can hit command C, and then if you select both your other clips, if you hit shift command V, this is going to be paste attributes. Now, the other clips already have uh, a color wheels and a hue saturation on them. I just want to copy over these audio attributes. So I'm going to deselect everything on this side. And from this, I can copy and paste all this, which looks great. I'll hit paste. And now all my clips are going to have the same audio Everything that I just changed on that first clip is now on all my clips. All right, so I got a few more things to show you guys, but first, like this video and then comment down below what other Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials do you wanna see from me? Let me know in the comments down below. So I just dragged some music into my timeline and I have a few more tips for you guys that's going to help a lot with your videos. And so first off, one major mistake that I see a lot of people do is they add in their background music way too loud. And so I like to start by bringing mine down all the way to about negative of 32 decibels. Now really this is just by ear and hearing how it sounds with your video and obviously if like the chorus or the drop happens in this in the song that might need to come a little bit lower but you just want to listen to this and Honestly, I tell people you'd rather underdo it than overdo it because I've clicked off videos before where the background music was just too loud and it's annoying. So again, you'd rather just bring that a little bit too low than a little bit too high. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. Now I can't even hear that music, so I'm gonna actually bring that up. What I've noticed is that usually the chorus or the loudest part of the song, that is going to be around negative 32. Sometimes these beginning parts in, in the video can be anywhere at negative 16, negative 12. It really just depends on the song, but that's just something to listen for as you're editing the music. If you're listening to this audio right now, then you are hearing me edit this audio to make it sound better. Now wait. Like that sounds pretty good, right? At negative 20 dB, it's just in the background, it's not overpowering, um, but we can see here, 
as it starts to get louder, I'll show you guys how to actually make that quieter. So let's say actually right at this part right here, we want to boost this part of the song. Maybe there's gonna be some B-roll or something cool is happening and there's no one talking. So we just wanna increase the audio of the music so that it kinda of takes over the video. Now how you do this is you can hit R and this is going to bring up your range selector. And once you select how much you want of this song to increase, you can then drag it back up like this. Most people want to bring it to zero because that's how it just imports as at zero decibels. But that actually is going to be too loud because when I'm talking, you know how we recorded stuff and it ends up being around negative six decibels. Well, that's what I found is that you don't want your music really going over negative six decibels sometimes because it can just sound really, really loud compared to your voice when you're talking. You can see that I also have some keyframes here and you can totally move these around if you want it to fade in slower or if you want it to fade in really quickly, you can move these closer together and you still can change the loudness right here by dragging it up and down. Better and a lot cleaner. Okay, well, I think that sounds pretty good. Again, this stuff is all by ear. So what I recommend is watching some videos that you like on YouTube, listening to it and hearing how their background music comes in. Is it really loud? Is it really quiet? And try to match that in your editing. So let's say this is the end of the video. If you wanna fade out the music, right here we are going to, you can't see it right now with the playhead over it, but right here we're gonna see this little icon and if you drag this over, this allows you to fade out the music. So if I drag it over even more, it's gonna fade out even slower. This would be a very quick fade out and so this is what that sounds like if you wanna fade out the music. Now, same at the beginning, I usually like to fade in the beginning of my music just a little bit, and you can do that at the beginning as well just by doing that. You can do the same thing with a video clip. So if I wanna fade in the audio of this video clip, you can drag this in as well, and you can do that on any clip, audio, video, you can fade it in or fade it out. Now, if you wanna separate your audio, if you click on a video, you can right click and then you can detach the audio. And this is gonna allow you to extend this over and maybe fade it in. And then I can do the same thing with this one as well. And this is gonna allow your clips to be smoother as they transition into each other, especially if you're talking quick and your cuts are fast. This is going to help from any sort of weird pops that might happen if you're like a frame off and it's cutting off the very beginning of your word. If you detach your audio, you can actually extend that so that your word or whatever you're saying is finishing. And you can also use this in many ways. So knowing how to detach the audio is a very useful thing. Just right click, detach audio. Now I just found out about this trick this last year and it's been really, really cool because I didn't even know you could do this, but I've loved using that and that is soloing a track. So let's say you added in your music, maybe you have your sound effects, you have everything in, but you want to edit your audio. You've forgot to edit your audio and that's fine. You don't have to edit your audio first when editing a video, but let's say you have all the sound effects, all this music, and now it's time for you to do the EQ, adjust the levels. Well, what you can do instead of playing this with music over it like this. It's audio right now, then you are hearing me edit. You can either select your audio clip and hit V and that's going to disable this clip. So if I play this again, right now, then you are hearing me. Now all you can hear is my voice. I can click on the clip, I can edit the EQ, I can do whatever I want to this clip. But let's say there's a bunch of sound effects and maybe a whole bunch of other stuff happening. Another way you can do this, let's go ahead and hit V on that again. Uh, another way you can do this is click on the clip that you want to solo out and then you can hit these headphones and that is going to make everything else in this timeline grayed out because it's all muted. And now all that you can hear is the clip you have selected and you can also select all the clips you want. Let's say you want all the talking head clips just to be selected. You can select all of those. You can then hit the headphone icon and that's going to work as well. The shortcut for this is option S. So let's say I want to select all my talking head because I want to go ahead and edit that audio, I can hit option S and that's going to disable everything else. So when I'm editing this audio, all I hear is my voice. Click on the screen to watch another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next video.